Welcome back. As a quick review, in part one, we introduced step one, identifying customer needs not only to explore the voice of the customer for current needs, but also go beyond what the customers know is possible to discover emerging needs. In step two, we translated the critical needs and opportunities into standard problems so we could leverage knowledge that already exists. In step three, we select the right innovation tool for the job, knowing that not all innovation tools are created equal. You remember the tool selection matrix. Which brings us to step four, generating ideas and concepts using one or more of the appropriate systematic innovation tools. With well over 25 practical tools and techniques, this is the heart of the innovation process and we could easily spend several hours here. In fact, in our workshops, we spent a minimum of eight hours on this step alone. These innovation tools come from over 12 years of innovation research. We loosely categorize these tools and methods into left brain category, which is based on science and technology, and a right brain category, which is based on psychology. Combined, there are over 30 methods. Six of the tools are from the TREES world. TREES stands for the Theory of Inventive Problem Solving, for those of you who have not have heard of TREES. And the rest are from additional modern innovation best practices. What you see here is a scrolling list in alphabetical order of the idea generation and problem solving tools covered in this step in our training and workshops. These tools are very diverse. Some of them are harder to learn than others. Some are very useful for situation A, but not relevant for situation B. Some give you very specific suggestions. Others give you very general directions and so on. One thing they all do have in common though is their unique ability to help a person or a team come up with novel ideas and better solutions to their challenging problems. It looks like a long list, but remember, in the last step, the process shows you which tools to use. This brings us to step five, evaluate, synthesize, and select the final concept. Once we have many ideas generated from the previous step, numerous techniques are available to do an objective evaluation of all these ideas to ultimately select or synthesize the best concept for the rest of the innovation process. This brings us to step six, detailed product, process, or service design. This step uses conventional engineering, product development, and design for Six Sigma best practices like FMEA, design of experiments, robust design, and so on. Step seven, communicate value to the customer. Any great product will fail if value isn't effectively communicated, which means understood by the customer in advance. Perceived value starts before they buy the product or service and solidifies through their experiences after the purchase. Step eight, deliver the new product or service. The design of the delivery and distribution of the product is the final step and can be addressed with many of the typical DFSS tools as well. After all these steps, the end customer now receives the new value. And with any new offering, time must be spent on continuous improvement and refinement of the product we just delivered. So the process repeats at a continuous improvement level until the product is retired. Now before we finish this webcast, I have four quick points about this eight-step systematic innovation process that's worth noting. First point, this flowchart looks very serial or sequential, but a few of these steps can overlap or even happen in parallel. Second point, although the best place to start this process is certainly in step one, you can start at different locations. For example, many teams start in step three with a particular tough problem that they're having. On the other hand, it's been shown that you have a very slim chance of success if you skip or rush through the first five steps and start in step six. Third point, although there are eight distinct steps here and we recommend taking each one of them very seriously, your project team may only need some of the steps shown. So when that's the case, we customize the process as well as our workshops based on the steps that you need the most. But be careful not to shortcut this process too much which brings us to our fourth and final point. We can't emphasize enough the importance of steps one through four here. Some common failures include doing a weak job in step one by missing either key customer needs or focusing efforts on the wrong needs. Another very frequent failure is to skip steps two and three completely, simply because people don't know the tools exist to formulate the right problems and leverage inventive knowledge. And lastly, in step four, teams often have a very weak innovation toolbox, if any at all. This results in teams going from a weak step one to a weak step four. The consequence is lukewarm ideas that either die on the vine or get developed and introduced only to find out they don't compete well in the marketplace. My fourth point here is simple. Give it serious thought before shortcutting any of these eight critical steps. 
So that's it for our introduction to systematic innovation. Thanks for listening in. If we've piqued your interest, if you have any questions, or you want to know how you can learn much more about this process, here's how to get a hold of us. We'd love to hear from you. 